The reading this evening is from Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 34. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he, Jesus, said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table, or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. Then he, Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me, deny three times that you know me. Amen. So, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us as we think upon this portion now. We ask your blessing now, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Right, so uh, we just uh, have a, a look through this passage here, claiming your treasure. Uh, we wonder what treasure we can get here. Uh, right. Don't seem to be. We have to try your mouse there and see where it go. Well, what, what do you do about appointments? Of course, don't you? You have to get an appointment and you have to have the appointment and then you have to go for it, don't you? Keep your appointment. And uh, great to have an appointment uh, with the Lord. A promotion, if the company offers a person promotion, of course, it's, it's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure it's quite amazing, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, if they bring someone in and say, well, we've been thinking about you, and, and they're saying, oh, well, I think we are, we're going to offer you promotion, which will give you a raise of pay or something like that. And, of course, uh, if you don't go for this appointment, of course, then you would miss it, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be claiming the, the great benefit that would be there. And uh, travel, if you... I, I've got a free ticket and I can travel free anywhere. I, all that. But I have to present the, the, the ticket usually. I have to present my uh, travel card and uh, then of course they can give me a ticket or, or uh, you know, show it to the man, uh, you know, if, to go through. So it allows me to travel all over the country, you see, you know. I can't go any place else free, but it makes me to travel over the country. And um, the great thing is, you see, that we have a ticket paid for us. Uh, uh, the Lord has paid for our uh, way to heaven, and he's, he's paid the ticket. He's paid the way, uh, and that's, that's quite so wonderful, you know. So, um, claiming your treasure. So, thinking of the position, the power, and the plan. Just simply like that, not making it very difficult. In Luke twenty two thirty, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's quite something, you know, and uh, and it's uh, it's quite a quite a quite a thing. I thought it was quite challenging, quite amazing uh, that he should offer this. That you may eat and drink at my table. Of course, that's speaking of fellowship and uh, with the Lord. And, uh, and sit on thrones, judging, why, what does that mean that we need to think about after judging the 12 tribes of Israel? So the great question there at the end is, of course, have you 
booked your seat is the great thing to be there. Have you really made your peace with God and all that? And there's a guarantee, a guarantee for all believers to, to for that, for to be there. Um, maybe in different, uh, different situations and all that sort of thing, you know? So, uh, see if this goes on another bit, it won't go. We'll have to click that. Have to use the mouse with this as well. So the position. So they were enjoying the Last Supper. That's uh, just uh, what leads up before that. Uh, they were enjoying the Last Supper. Uh, they had a great time. Man, this this would be a great life, and they would be wonderful. Uh, they like to be have something great in this kingdom, and they wonder who was going to be the top dog in it all. You know. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Jesus was the host and the twelve were guests of course at that table and uh, that was quite something that he was uh, doing that for them and, uh, and that was great right too. So the disciples had a big debate uh, and the debate was who was going to be, the, who was the greatest you know. They were debating that and, and uh, Jesus of course you know wouldn't like it. Here it is, verse 20, but now there were also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And uh, they thought someone should be in a special place there. But what did Jesus, how did Jesus deal with that? You know. Right. We're stuck again. We have mouse, we need the mouse more so. So, uh, Anyway, in the world at that time, of course, there was uh, pagan customs, and in the pagan customs, and uh, it was interesting that, um, you know, the they Passover meal too, you know, they had special seats there too as well. So um, the most honoured guests sat on the, the host's right. You know, Judas too, he was on the Jesus' right too as well, as far as I can, we can work out and determine. And uh, the next honoured at uh, that next honoured guest sat on the left. There'd be a number of them on the right, but the others then would sit on his left. Right. So the all and Judas coveted him through that seat. And amazing that Judas, uh, you know, was there. Maybe the Lord made uh, because of uh, Judas' situation to be a challenge for him that he'd have him there. You see, because he was wanting to give him. Uh, the sock, of course, right? So uh, a, perhaps Judas was in, in the most need of it, you know, there, uh, we'd say, right? And uh, you think of the power then. So this here illustration uh, Jesus brings up, and he said to them, uh, verse 25, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. And really it means that they would give benefits and blessings to different people. But they were tough lots, you know. They were, they were not easy and, uh, and they wouldn't deal uh, very well with some people, you know. And so, where, where they're going for, for worldly power, uh, these, these disciples, uh, I suppose, like, it was similar to worldly power, you know. The kings could be benefactors, or they, uh, you know, could, uh, that's uh, beheaders, really. They could take the head off of people. They could be giving them blessings and benefits and all that sort of thing. But on the other hand, they could easily behead them. Nehemiah was afraid of that too, you know, as he came before the king. And uh, uh, and uh, he, he, he was really concerned for Right. So uh, they, uh, they were quite, uh, I wonder how they felt about it. But anyway, uh, here it shows a denarius, you see, uh, shows the, the head of uh, Augustus on it. And they tell me there, uh, some of these people, that Augustus he was uh, a. They had the, um, the showing that Augustus was a god, and of course they wanted to make these emperors wanted to make themselves gods, uh, and they were worshipped. And Tiberius, 
uh, another emperor, he uh, wants to say that he was adored. So you're quite something, you know. Uh, and uh, Christianity was warned, warned by Jesus to avoid that. We, we, Jesus is really warning us here not to get caught up in that sort of uh, political struggle or like that, or, or wanting, uh, and he's just trying to warn the disciples not to be going for, you know, wondering who's going to be top. And so what does he do about it? Um, in verse 26, but not so among you, he says. He doesn't want the disciples to be like those uh, Gentiles and those leaders and, and people. On the contrary, he says, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he who, has, he who governs as he who serves. Now you see, Jesus often used the example of a child, you know, and uh, set him in the midst of them. I told, you know, he, he was really hitting their pride and uh, reminding them that they weren't to be uh, pushing themselves forward, you know. So the disciples were to avoid the power struggle, not like the they, um, ordinary people, you know, in power, like the politics, Irish politics and all that sort of thing. So Jesus was humbling the proud disciples. Quite something, wasn't that? Eh? Right. How should we act? Well, in Philippians 2, 3, the verse says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. That's how we should. That's how we are told to act in the church and the way it is. Look on others uh, uh, as better, not look down on people. Uh, that won't help uh, one another, will it? And so often Jesus used the example of a child in me, uh, in his own, as I mentioned before. Uh, many times he did that. Uh, he used it in different ways to be changed. And, uh, particularly in this area when they were wanting to wonder who would be the greatest. And uh, the thing is about a child in those days, uh, children were put down and not listened to, not looked to. But Jesus made them uh, very important you see and uh, look you saw an example in them but they they always wanted to look to the older people you know and not so much the the, the younger people and nowadays it's the other way around the, the young ones are pushed forward and the, the old ones are uh, less thought about you know locked away sometimes uh, so now you know you notice Greta Thun, Thunberg you know her. She uh, she's the one that said uh, oh, this uh, on about this glo global warming and and all that sort of thing. And she's talking all over the world. And she's 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 listened to all over the the, the world. And uh, <clears throat> uh, she, you know she told them how dare you uh, you know neglect her. It's particularly she's thinking of the young ones. And uh, uh, it's a total a total change is showing you there. But the, <coughs> So the whole question, the question I'm asking here then is, did Peter get the message? Well, how did, how did he take that? Well, you see, in his uh, letter that he wrote uh, to the Christians of the first century, they were to shepherd the flock, which he had purchased with his own blood. They should be shepherds and, and be overseers and not be lording over the flock. Right, 1 Peter 5.3 nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And to show more the love of Jesus, we are to be more like Jesus. That's challenging. It's not easy, is it? But we are to be more like Jesus. And the quote, we are to act your age, not your shoe size. Eh? <laughs> We've heard that before. Um, and, uh, and to be... Uh, the part and you know to all right so verse 27 for who is greater he who sits at their table or he who serves is not he who sits at the table yet i am among you as the one who serves and so he's saying how much we make uh, invite someone you see for for uh, something 
uh, for a cup of tea or whatever it is, or even a cup of water. Uh, it is not he who sits. Is it not he who sits at the table? But Jesus is the one who's saying, I'm serving. He came to serve. Uh, and, you know, it's quite amazing, isn't it? We often sing that, you know, he's the servant king. This is how God, the servant king, we come now to worship him. We lay our lives in offering to him. And, uh, and all that, you know, in that hymn. He is the servant king and he came. He was a king, but he came to serve us and to help us and to lay down his life for us. The great thing, you know. And so he's the true example of, of a servant king, you know. Uh, right. So notice in verses 31 to 34 how Jesus deals with Peter and his response. And what is verses? That is the, quite a challenging verse there, you know, 31 to 34. Uh, and Peter, Simon, you know, he says there one the amazing thing that Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Interesting that Satan, he has to, he hasn't got authority, he has to do that. Uh, he did that the same with Job. And again, here with Peter, he did the same thing. Uh, he wants to, and that's to sift him, is to, to pull him down, to pull him away. Uh, the Lord wants to build us up, but Satan uh, tests, attempts us to, to pull us down. So I prayed for you, that wonderful that the Lord would pray for Peter, that your faith fail not, and when you have returned to me, strengthen the brethren. But you know, Peter was quite challenging, but he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison. Uh, and to death, you know. You know, he was very, uh, uh, you know, positive, very forthcoming, and he thought he could uh, do all that. But of course, that wasn't, that didn't happen. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, this is a challenge for him, you know, uh, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. <laughs> oh, dear, that was reminding of his uh, denial. And that was quite hard. That was quite a reminder about the weakness of Peter after all, you know. He, he felt so great. So Jesus addressed Peter here. You notice here in this particular place that Jesus addressed Peter. But Greek scholars say the you is plural. It applied particularly to all the disciples. You know. Simon, and the Lord said to Simon, Satan has uh, asked for you that you may, that he may sift you as wheat. And I have prayed for you. So there it is, the plural, they reckon that's plural. Uh, and he, he, he would uh, and concern for them all. And that the you here in this particular place is, uh, you know, and even, and particularly dressed out for Peter, you know, where he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day before you, plural. Even for the other day, will deny me three times. The Lord literally deny him, but you, that you knew me. And so I suppose they all uh, forsook Jesus and fled, that is, a crucifixion. Well, that's uh, just a reminder. I, I'm not a Greek scholar, but that's what they, they tell us. Is Jesus appreciative of the twelve? Does he appreciate them at all? What do you think? Here's an interesting verse 28. Like, uh, you know, to, but you are those who have continued with me in my trials. Amazing that now come back to, uh, the other is quite challenging. Now he's back to, uh, you know, say, how we appreciate them. But you, they stood with Jesus through his trials. They have. You know, they had their high points and low points, didn't they? And, you know, people were deserting Jesus. But Peter speaks on, on the behalf of the twelve, and he says, you know, to whom will you go to? Will you leave me too? Jesus said to them. And who can we go to? Peter says, you have the words of eternal life. So he was, uh, you know, that was his high point, and it was quite, uh, challenge. They kept on, and Jesus here is commending them, isn't he? But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. And that's the great trials we have to encourage and help one another. 
in this life, you know, too. It's a great example here that Jesus, but it's also very appreciative, wonderful how he cares uh, for the twelve, for his ones that he's going to be using and sending out. All right. So there we looked at the position, well, the power too, and then finally the plan. There's an interesting thing here and this plan that he has, that he unveils now to them. And particularly, he has a great thought, a great concern to work through them and to use them. And he talked about Peter strengthening the brethren. And uh, of course, will they be able to do that and all of them be able to help uh, the, the, the Christians of the first century as well in preaching the gospel? I'm sure they will. And so the promotion, you know, uh, there is a, the promotion then, you see, you know, this plan to promote them. What is it? Verse 29. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed upon me. Yeah, he's a kingdom. That's fine, you know, to know that. But what is this that he stowed? I have stowed upon you a kingdom, a rule. It really thinks of a rule or something to do he's going to give here at this future. Uh, you ever think about it? That uh, we're not just uh, no, we're not just a pie in the sky, and there is a future for us to do, and uh, we're not absolutely understand all about what that is. But it's quite amazing, isn't it? What an offer, isn't it? It's amazing uh, promotion, amazing plan. Uh, after all, he's been saying to them, it's a great offer to them. And what does it mean? That's the challenge. Whatever does it mean? No more cocooning, eh, for us, eh? <laughs> Is that right? There'd be no more cocooning in that kingdom, eh? Uh, that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> With no more particular uh, area to travel and say, oh, you can't go any farther. You can't go do this or that. Well, in verse 30, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. What is that all about? Well, is it just all about lots of food and drink? We, we, uh, Sean was talking about this, of course, in John's Gospel. Well, of course, first it, it talks about fellowship, doesn't it? They had a fellowship together. They had great fellowship at the, and that was a great uh, talk. There's the sat around the table for the Passover uh, meal. And of course, they love great food. But Jesus shared his spiritual food, would be sharing his spiritual food with them. And that would be the great thing in this new world. And, and that's what the food and, and, and drink and all that would be curtailed. Oh, yeah, some people might think, oh, you know, it's going to be great. Lots of drink in heaven, you know, and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, uh, nothing about that, of course. It's spiritual. It's the feeding of our souls on him and dwelling and uh, of course the judges in the past are to uphold the law and order even today now is the judge that upholds in court the law and order and uh, uh, everything has to uh, be brought he has to listen to the evidence and the uh, the jury and all that and then he has to make his decision you know uh, so the believer can give direction now to people you know we can we, an answer of the hope that has within us with meekness and godly fear, what, you know, St. Peter talks about after you. And to bring, uh, to tell people of the wonderful good news of the gospel. And there is hope for us and there is blessing for us beyond uh, this COVID, you know. And uh, uh, we can trust the Lord Jesus in it all. So, 1 Corinthians 6 to Saints, it says there, judge the world. Quite amazing, isn't it? That uh, that is something. Well, it doesn't mean that they're going to, um, you know, uh, uh, maybe uh, we could say, of course, that the, the, the believers will, of course, um, will judge, the, you know, at the end days. But saints judge the world. Well, we, we can give an answer of the hope within us. We can uh, tell people the good news of the gospel. We can show them there's a better way and a better hope for them. Uh, and that is great. Now, in this life, uh, we can speak and we can uh, 
our testimony and how the Lord has done for us is a great challenge to people. Will we have a throne or a kingly rule in the new Israel? Well, it appears to be that there is something planned for us. It appears to be that there's, and the, we, there are various um, uh, references, you know, in, in Revelation uh, and all that about this great uh, throne and kingdom. And he talks about them uh, uh, in, in uh, Revelation 3, they'll, they'll be uh, sitting and um, fellowshipping together. And he talks about, you know, uh, where they said repent then and uh, I knocking at the door and uh, if any man opens the door I will come in and sup with him and he with me and again it's talking about this fellowship this uh, sharing he'd be sharing all the wonderful blessings of the kingdom of the the word of God with us and so Jesus wants us to be ready for that that is the great challenge and of course we're rushing on here uh, hopefully uh, and uh, so Jesus wants us to be ready and uh, to be ready that's what he said uh, you know even in Matthew's gospel and there uh, when he was talking about uh, when he come back again to be ready for his return and to be ready for this great uh, kingdom and all that he'd be asking us to do so there would be the reading of the will follows you know a funeral for disposal of the estate doesn't it that's where the reading of the will takes place and, uh, and to find out, well, what? What is it? What is they have given? And most people say, well, what does a person do after the day? Well, they leave everything, don't they? And uh, this, this is a hub. So he, this, I bequeath my family Bible and all it contains. And what are they? The son was got, got this uh, family Bible. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm sure... You know, he could have been disgusted when he saw, no, a wonderful Bible, you know. He could have been disgusted, you know, to see to see this. And other people had got uh, money, you know, they got so much, you know. But he had just got the Bible. And it was a bit funny after. So, um, but one day he opened it and out dropped an envelope. And of course... The solicitor, when he went to see him, wondered how long it would take for him to find the letter in, in the Bible. But you see, it was he, he got the Bible and all it contained. So there, he got his inheritance. So he claimed his inheritance and learned about the treasures it contained. And that was quite something. That was quite amazing that he, he learned all that and he, he believed it all. That was the great plan. Jesus is offering a greater and eternal inheritance. And he tells us about that too in the Word of God. And um, uh, so claiming your inheritance, it is your eternal inheritance, you know. We read about that in Hebrews too as well. And uh, uh, we know about the lady that uh, was, uh, was uh, claiming that and uh, she, she girl was running and they asked her, what are you running to? Where are you going to? Well, she says, I'm going to, well, her brother has died and I'm going to hear the will read and claim the inheritance that's mine. And so as we sit at the Lord's table, we do claim the inheritance that is ours. And as we come to God's word, it's claiming our inheritance, claiming our treasure. And that is the great thing, you know. And so we want to thank you. Uh, and uh, we maybe time, we might have time to look at others. So let, let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for your blessing. We pray, O oh Lord, your hand upon us, that you will lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh Lord, your blessing. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. So we could maybe think uh, about some, if we have some time left. There can't be very much time left. It hasn't said yet about the time. Maybe we'll get longer. I don't know. Uh, so, all right, Sam. Uh, we, uh, I was going to look at uh, those one or two references that I didn't put in, and one of them, that one was in in Revelation uh, three, Revelation chapter three, and uh, it says, 
Revelation chapter 3. To him who overcomes, verse 21, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Then he said, he who is an ear to hear, let him hear. So it's very challenging, isn't it? That's, that's one there. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, I think this is finished now. Is the no. video? No, oh, the yeah. video is not finished yet. Oh, the recording. And uh, no, there's, um, I think because there's... There's another one here then in, in, in Revelation 19. And uh, because there's only three of us, I think it would be. Then he, he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the say, true sayings of God. Uh, and I fell at his feet and worshipped him. But he said to me, See, you don't do it. And your fellow servant and your brethren, you have the testimony of Jesus. So uh, there's, there's another one here then as well, you see, that... Um, in this chapter, I think, oh, it's chapter maybe 20, I'm not sure now. Uh, I don't like looking at chapter 20 too much. Um, and I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls, those who had been beheaded, 20 verse 4. Uh, so the, of the, being beheaded for their witness to Jesus and to the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on the foreheads or on the hand, that they lived and reigned with Christ, it says, a thousand years, you know. Anyway, there it is. So, 